I have this string. I want to split on the pipe, but I don't know how. I don't want to split at the white space, only at the pipe. Is this possible? Did you try Googling anything about the split method? Welcome to Stack Overflow. You seem to be asking someone to write some code for you. Stack Overflow is a question and answer site, not a code writing service. Please see here to learn how to write effective questions. Whatever happened to Stack Overflow? How did we end up in a place where we not only get rude and snarky comments, but we also get robotic-like responses from real people for valid questions? This is not a rare scenario. This has become the norm on Stack Overflow. And I just have one question. How did we end up here? My name is Gabe, and today we're going to look at some of the key factors that resulted in the cesspool that is Stack Overflow Q&A today. I'll also explore some approaches that may solve the problems we face so that developers can just share information without fear of reproach. Let's go back in time to 2008. NASA's unmanned spacecraft Phoenix becomes the first to land on the northern polar region of Mars, Google Chrome is first released, the stock market plunges across the globe, and a little known website Stack Overflow comes into existence. Stack Overflow was created by Joel Spolsky and Jeff Atwood to address an issue that was apparent in the mid to late 2000s. The issue was that programmers had no way to easily share knowledge about difficult problems. There was Usenet, which became obsolete once the World Wide Web became popular. Then there was Experts Exchange, where developers could share questions and answers. This had a myriad of problems, the foremost being it was a paid service. Joel wanted a free website that could replace Experts Exchange and earn money by doubling as a job listing board. He knew somebody would do it eventually, so he waited. And waited. And he waited. Then one day, Jeff Atwood came to him for advice on blogging, and Joel simply responded, I've got a better idea instead. The Stack Overflow experiment went extraordinarily well. It was based on a gamification system, similar to Reddit and other sites, where users could upvote good questions and good answers. Once you got a certain amount of reputation, you were granted more privileges to the site. These privileges included editing questions, closing questions, and reopening questions. This means that poor questions are dealt with quickly, and good answers rank higher. This worked great for moderation in the short term. However, it led to the problems we see today. Okay, so let's review real quickly. How do users gain privilege? Well, they gain privilege by answering questions. All right, what can you do with the privilege? You can answer questions, you can close questions, you can edit questions, and you can reopen questions. Okay, well, that all makes sense. Well, what happens if you ask a question and somebody decides to close it? Well. You can reopen it, but wait a second, you need the privilege to reopen it, the privilege you don't have because you're a new user. Okay, well, what if somebody's bullying you in the comments? Well, you flag the comment, okay? And then the flagged comment goes to the moderators. So let's just take a look at some questions on Stack Overflow right now. There's this user who asks, I apologize in advance if this kind of question is not allowed here, but I was wondering if anyone knows what technology the site has been built with. Now. I think this is a valid question. Programmers build websites using so many different technologies, it's reasonable to ask if anyone knows what a particular site used to build it. Well, the Stack Overflow users, uh, they have a different thought. The first one says, seems like you knew this was off topic. And then this person says, I can see quite a bit of information in the dev tools. The implication being, why can't you see what the dev tools show me? <laughs> this next person says, really? The console offered nothing? To me, it just yelled out pixajs.com. And this user gave a very helpful answer and said it's magic, naturally. And then finally, somebody just says it's pixajs. That's what they used. The poor user simply says thanks and then leaves with their tail between their legs. What's wrong with these people? Why is it so difficult to just say it's pixajs? All right, so the next question is pretty technical, but an experienced programmer should be able to help out. So this person asks, what is the meaning of the following line of code? Why is this allowed as zero is an R value and it's not a variable name? What is the significance of const in this statement? And the responses. So first person says homework. And what does your C++ textbook have to say? <laughs> and the next person very helpfully says, just read a good book. <laughs> And then here, this link has a similar question, which may or may not have been helpful at all. Now, I was actually curious about what this question 
was, like what the answer to this was, because I didn't even know what it was. I code in C++ pretty regularly, and I did not know the meaning of this. I had never seen this syntax and didn't even know it was valid code. And this poor guy was downvoted 10 times. Why? Because he had the audacity to ask a question. Okay. Okay. So he finally finds an answer and then he posts it to the website. Uh, the answer gets downvoted. So if anybody else is looking for something similar, they can't find it. And I was actually curious about this. Like I had never seen this before. And yet if I ever were searching for it, I probably wouldn't find it because Google is now going to rank this low since it was downvoted. This next user asks, what is E in e.preventDefault? He says, I'm not able to understand what the parameter E, which is passed to prevent the default action in JavaScript is. Now, to an experienced programmer, this is pretty obvious. However, if you don't program and you've never seen this or you're new to programming, this is a completely valid question. The response is, E is the event. Well, that's actually a pretty tame response, but it provides absolutely no information. Then this lovely gentleman says, this question shows zero research effort, aside from the fact that you got the answer by literally typing your title into Google. Did you try anything, like console.log e, on different element bindings to see what this might be? What is wrong with these people? They seem to have forgotten that Stack Overflow is a Q&A site. How dare this user ask a question on a Q&A site? This user says, I'm learning to code C++ in Unreal Engine. I see the syntax and I don't get it. I think it means this, but it just does something different. Can anyone explain how this syntax actually works? The response is, please pick up a textbook and learn C++ systematically. Um, I'm sorry, this is a Q&A site. This is a class pointer declaration, no more, no less. Ah, that makes it perfectly clear. How did I not see that before? Just in case you're wondering, that is sarcasm because that is not clear at all. Once again, this is an example of a problem I've never seen before and I program in C++ almost daily. This user thankfully provided a clear and concise explanation, but why did all those other users feel the need to waste time out of their day to berate someone who had the audacity to ask a question? This next question's answer gives us a little window into the moderator's brains. Warning, it's a scary place. This user asks, how do I answer a closed question? He says, this question was closed yesterday for some reason. It was missing some key information. The original poster fixed the question and now it's very clear. How can I answer this? Should I start a chat room? Now, this is the crux of the problem of Stack Overflow. Closed questions are sort of left in a limbo state. They're closed, so they can't be answered. You have to edit it to be able to answer it, but we've already talked about the problems that come with editing it and trying to get your answer reopened. Hint, hint, you need some reputation, which most people don't have. Fortunately, a moderator gives us an answer to this question. He says, Edit the question to include the comment, then vote to reopen it. Oh, okay, so uh, you just edit it and then you have to vote to reopen it. So even if the question is fixed, you can't really open it at all. And then he puts in bold, do not open a chat room or answer in comments or otherwise work around the closing. Because how dare somebody try to help some other random person on the internet. Okay, let's change it up a bit. Let's look at some questions that were closed, but lots of people disagreed with that closing. This question says, the use of multiple J-frames, good or bad practice? Well, why was this closed? Because it is opinion based. Stack Overflow moderators, they hate opinions, okay? And why do they hate opinions? Well, nobody really knows. <laughs> and opinions are kind of tricky because you can't tell if a question's subjective or objective. There's kind of a blurry line between those two. And who gets to decide whether it's subjective or objective? Well, the moderators. And the responses we can see some people say, this question has become more valuable than they ever thought it could. Well, I guess the mods just got this one wrong. Whoops, it looks like they got this one wrong too. This question has 557 upvotes. That's a lot on Stack Overflow where questions typically get only five to six upvotes. Why was it closed? Well, uh, we don't know. <laughs> it was closed because a mod decided it needed to be. Surely, this was just another one-off mistake, right? Wait, the mods messed up again? This question was closed because it wasn't focused enough. Well, it got 518 upvotes, so clearly some people, at least half a thousand of them, thought it was focused enough. I'm beginning to see a pattern here. 371 upvotes? Well, it's closed. Why? Because it's an opinion. Another opinion? 
How dare these programmers ask an opinionated question? Finally, somebody was fed up enough and said, plus 220 votes and not constructive? Clearly, moderators and users have different perspectives on what is constructive. I agree, random user. I completely, wholeheartedly agree. Another opinion. Man, these stupid programmers can't stop asking subjective questions, can they? These moderators, they have such a difficult life. This question was closed because, well, we actually don't know why it was closed. <laughs> Unfocused question. Closed. Nice. Moving on. More opinions. Moving on. You know, I just don't like this guy's name. Let's close this one and move on. Another opinion. Oh wait, 3,000 people actually wanted to know the answer to this one. Maybe? I'm not such a good moderator. Nah, those people just don't know an opinion when it smacks them in the face. Unfortunately, I have so many more examples of this. If you want to see examples of this, just click the link in the description and you can see up to 500 more questions that are just like the ones I just showed you. Even though there are only 500 questions there, there's probably thousands of questions that will never see the light of day because of the rigged system that we already talked about that is in place. Stack Overflow has a problem. I wish it didn't because it's helped me and so many other programmers over the past decade. However, I think it's reaching its lifetime. It's going to remain a valuable resource for decades to come, but it's no longer gaining value. If you ask programmers who have asked questions on Stack Overflow, I bet you they got their own horror stories to tell. Not only that, but they'll talk about how they now go to Discord servers, Reddit, Quora, anywhere except Stack Overflow because nobody likes to be berated for absolutely no reason. Maybe Stack Overflow will notice this problem, the real problem, and fix this. Anyways, that is all I have for today. I hope you learned a little bit about the cesspool that is Stack Overflow.